This video is brought to you by Jobber, but more on them later. We kind of find ourselves in a unique situation. Now, there's a lot of pressure for the younger generation to go to four-year colleges. And, you know, with the stigma attached to a lot of the vocational schools, I feel like there's going to be a huge and unique opportunity coming up in the near future. There's a lot of older workers, a lot of older tradesmen. There's roofers, plumbers, electricians, uh, painters, and a lot of those guys are getting ready to retire. And I don't think that we have the supply of new people coming into the industry. So I know a lot of people out there are thinking about starting their own painting business, which is definitely why you clicked on this video. So I'm going to go ahead and think about a time when I first started my painting business. Now, it was a little unique for me. I didn't really want to start a paint business. It's just kind of what I fell into. But if I could go back, I'd like to do it different for sure. I would definitely do it different because I didn't really go in with the game plan. If I was to do it again, I'd have a game plan, you know, plan for success. So there's many different ways to start a painting business. And it really depends on kind of where you're at, um, your budget, obviously, and like what type of business you want to do. So I'm going to kind of go over three real quick ones. Closer to home, closer to where I started is somebody who just wants to start, doesn't have a lot of money to throw in doesn't really have a license maybe they just work for a painter for a couple of years picked up the basic stuff and they kind of want to go out on their own now that happens more than you think i did the same thing what i would do in that situation is this first thing i would do to get my first customer is i wouldn't spend any money on ads at anything none of that to start with first thing i would do is i'll set up a facebook page that'd be the number one thing that i do to get my first customer for my painting business second thing i do is i'd move all my furniture in my bedroom i push it all towards the middle i pick out some paint colors and i'd wrap and paint my bedroom while i do that the main thing that you got to do that you can't forget to do is you need to film it and take perfect before and after pictures of the room now make sure you're choosing like a really good contrasting color that's gonna show up great on camera because that's definitely a crucial point of advertising your new paint business. So that's what I would do first, set up a Facebook page, film myself painting my very own room. That way you could showcase your service and it makes it a lot easier and it catches a lot more of people's attention. Um, nowadays, video is really the attention catcher. So you're gonna have to just lean into it. If you don't have skills with video, ask a younger person, maybe you got a neighbor or somebody, but really it's easy. We all got cell phones, set up the cell phone and just put it on a tripod, get it done. So I would do that first. I would upload that video to a Facebook page and just saying, hey, I'm offering uh, whatever the price is that you choose that you want to start out with. Now, don't freak out on the price too much. Now, a standard bedroom, like a 10 by 10, you're probably going to use anywhere from two to three gallons on the wall. So just figure out what your cost is for those two or three gallons. Figure out how much you want to make to paint that room and start there. It's a great starting point. Um, it's been a long time since I've just painted like a bedroom and uh, my prices are significantly higher, but I know there's guys out there that could do it for cheaper. I was doing it for cheaper. I don't recommend working hourly when you first, very first start off um, because it's just, it's better for you to just pick a flat price for your job, get it done. And that way you can adjust what you want to do. Now, on top of that, once you get some practice at your own room, you want to get more videos. You want to get more before and after pictures and you want to get Test your skill, see how long, figure out what your production rates are, like how long does it take you to paint a 10 by 10 room, right? Cause that's gonna help you on in the future. Ask friends and family, ask your mom, your sister, auntie, uncle, if you can paint their room or paint their house or do any kind of paint project. The key is to get footage and great before and after pictures. All right, second method of starting, let's say you got about five grand and you wanna start up a paint business. Well, first thing I suggest to do is drop the money on a paint license. Go out, get certified, take the classes, take the test, get your, um, so I live in California. I know it's different for everyone else, but if you are in California, just make sure you check uh, the local government. That way you know that you're on track and in your state, in your county, in your city. But for me, California, go get your state license. So out of that $5,000, you've paid for your business license, you got your insurance and your bond, you bought your equipment, now you have a little bit left over to start running Facebook ads. You're gonna have to figure it out on your own and it might take some time, you're gonna make some errors, but all the errors provide data and with the data, you can really dial it in to get your phones ringing. But then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, have a plan for marketing. What you got to do is you got to just go door to door, you know, make some bandit signs, get those bandit signs up where a lot of traffic is coming. Everybody has commuters. A lot of people leave town for work. So wherever they're going to be sitting at a stop sign during that traffic, those are really great spots to put up your signs. Um, 
So if you got some money, that's a great way to do it. Now, if you're starting off with more of a budget like 25,000 or 10,000, you might be able to hire a marketing firm to get your name out there. Now, all the previous steps all apply, right? You want to make sure that you have the skills to do it. You got to make sure you know what your overhead and your production rates are, and then you got to know what you want to make, right? And another couple caveats is that the decide what kind of industry painter you want to be. Are you going to be commercial, residential, industrial? Are you going to paint cars? I don't know. But for me, it's residential custom homes. So if you have the money, maybe get a social media marketing management company to run your ads like that. For me, I enjoy doing all that. I do it all myself. Nowadays, I mainly rely on Google and Facebook and word of mouth for a lot of my advertising. I don't really do much door hangers anymore or bandit signs or anything like that. However, when I am on a job, I always put street signs out. Um, I got the truck wrap. So basically, if you're going to start your first paint business, uh, those are three different ways that you can get your first, very first customers. Uh, there's a lot of ways. Don't let not having customers stop you from starting something. Now, if you don't have any money, just start painting. I mean, a lot of people are scared like, oh, there's going to be a bust. I'm going to go to jail. I'm going to get fined. No, just work for friends and family at first. Get your tool bag built up and then uh, just go out there and do it. I mean, the main thing is just do a good job. If you mess it up, make sure you fix it. And it's all real easy, man. And watch some more videos if you need help on how to paint certain things. And if you need more help estimating or figuring out your production rates, I got lots of videos on that. And if you're not sure how to issue an estimate, today's sponsor is a great help for that. And I use it for all of my businesses, the paint business and all my side businesses. I use Jobber. So Jobber is a great platform. It makes it really easy for me to take payments. Um, I send all my estimates out. Uh, I keep track of all my scheduling is done through Jobber. Jobber has been a big, helpful component of my business. I used to just kind of do everything with paper. I would use one program for writing out the estimates. I would use a different program to invoice. I'd use a different program to take payments. So it got a little tricky and um, it makes it really easy to share pictures. I, that's kind of one of the greatest things about it is all the pictures can be attached to the job. I really like that. And then again, the price book, you could pre-program all your standard stuff, like your basic stuff that you see, you know, doors, two sides of doors, uh, six inch trim, whatever it is that you're doing a lot like crown molding, you could pre-program your production rate. So, if, you know, I do 100 feet in an hour, then that's your production rate. Right. And you could figure out how to dial it in further. Um, so once you have a good starting point, then you can start to mess with the numbers and you can start to really get dialed in. But don't be scared of getting that first customer because it's really a lot easier than you think. Just get your name out there, do good work. And before you know it, you guys will be making a lot of money because a lot of these old guys are on their way out and you're going to be on your way in. If you're interested in trying out Jobber to start your new business and uh, make your invoices look great and professional, check out the top link in the description. You'll get a special offer. Uh, make sure you give me a thumbs up. And if you're still watching in this video, put blue bucket in the comment section. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.